What's going on guys? I am here with Dutchy and he is going to help me explain the nutrient density of various shellfish. And by shellfish, we are referring to crab, lobster, mollusks like mussels, oysters, clams, shrimp, any fish with a shell, essentially. So Dutchy is um Dutchy's a little cold right now because he just got out of the fridge. But uh, maybe he'll he'll spring up a little bit later. So shellfish really is one of the most nutrient dense foods we can consume. It's up there with organ meats, egg yolks, the highest quality off cuts there are. There are not any foods that, to me, take value over shellfish from a nutrient density perspective. They are all as valuable as things like liver, um, all the foods that I talk about, cod liver oil, any super nutrient dense food, shellfish is up there. The reason I like shellfish so much is because you are able to purchase a lot of it alive at a much fresher quality than other foods that we have access to. In addition to that, it is a super approachable food in a sense that, you know, people like shrimp, they like clams, they like oysters, whereas things like liver and a lot of the other organ meats that I tend to eat on the carnivore diet, people aren't really as much of a fan of. The main difference between shellfish and other fin fish is, of course, the accessibility. It's obviously much easier to go to a beach and pick up some clams or oysters than it is to spear or reel in a fish from the ocean. So there's plenty of evidence on various coastal regions for use of seafood and mollusks and mass exploitation of these nutritional resources during the upper Paleolithic period. There's also plenty of evidence that Neanderthals used fire to open up these shells. And interestingly enough, they tended to use the shells as decorations, whether as jewelry or kind of status symbols of the person. So whether or not these foods played a role in the actual evolution of humans due to the ease of caloric access, it is safe to say that various indigenous groups did prize shellfish. They specifically fed these foods to pregnant women, a nursing woman, children, couples looking to conceive. It was one of the foods that was gathered along with things like fish roe, liver, very nutrient dense animal foods. If we wanna talk from a scientific and paper value perspective of what nutrients occur in the shellfish, the main discrepancy is the high preformed DHA content. Normally in a ruminant animal, you can only get preformed DHA from consuming the brain tissue. In regards to actual vitamin content of these foods, they tend to be excellent sources of the B vitamins as well as vitamin D3. To a lesser extent, these foods have pretty good amounts of all the fat soluble vitamins. You know, this shellfish has vitamin A, it has vitamin E, it has vitamin K2. It's an amazing source of all the minerals and elements, of course, iodine. But the main thing that shellfish has over other foods is specifically the DHA content. And of course, this correlates directly with how fatty the item is. In the case of mussels here, they have a bit less fat than something like oysters. So oysters would have a higher DHA content per calorie. For anyone not confident in the nutritional value of shellfish, there were literally groups of people that subsisted off of shellfish that were in just as good health as any other indigenous group. In Vilyamar Stephens' The Fat of the Land, when he examined skeletal remains of coastal tribes, that subsisted only off of shellfish. The skeletal structure, the development of the face, all of the markers for optimal health were the same as groups of Eskimos that were living off of fish, mammalian meat. So there's evidence, anthropologically speaking, that you can be just as healthy consuming only shellfish versus ruminant meat. And I would argue that someone consuming shellfish now is going to be much healthier and get a much higher nutrient density in their diet because people tend not to consume those off cuts, those organ meats that are necessary to get complete nutrient density in the context of a whole ruminant animal. And you can imagine the reason being that the shellfish and this seafood is more nutrient dense nowadays is that it is a complete food. When you're eating a whole shrimp, a whole mussel, a whole clam, a whole oyster, that is equivalent to you eating essentially the whole animal, whether it's a cow or a pig or a sheep or a lamb. Uh, same thing with eating things like fish eggs or fish roe. You're essentially 
it would it would essentially be like shrinking down the entire cow and eating it in one bite to get the complete nutritional profile but with foods like mussels and oysters that is much more approachable to do now obviously there are pros and cons to shellfish the pros being it's a very approachable food it's super nutrient dense the cons are of course the concerns with farmed fish pollution in the water and unfortunately in this case when the water is polluted, it can be so polluted and it can affect the taste of the animal so much that you cannot consume it. In the case of grain-fed steak, we can cover up the off-acrid taste of grain-fed fat by cooking it, by putting salt and pepper on it. In the case of oysters, I have literally gotten oysters that have smelled like sewage. And I smelled the outside of the oyster and it didn't smell right. So I was like, let me open it up. I opened up the oyster. It was one of the worst smells I have ever smelled in my life. Pure, rotten sewage. So one of the major cons is the quality of the shellfish that you're getting really does correlate with the sourcing of the ocean. And that doesn't really even matter if it's wild caught or not, unfortunately. Uh, it could still be in polluted water. So, you know, one of the main reasons I don't really consume shellfish as much as I would like to is partially because of that reason. Another thing that people don't really mention is it can be a little bit expensive. You know, this crab is like 25 bucks uh, just for the crab. I mean, obviously things like mussels and clams are actually very affordable, but things like shrimp, lobster, crab tend to be on the slightly more expensive side. But at the end of the day, with the amount of money people spend on BS, I don't think any sort of food budget is going to be too expensive in the right context. So if you guys are looking to increase the nutrient density of your diet in a really approachable and delicious way, this is definitely one of the best ways to go about it. I know I spout all the time about eat liver, eat egg yolks, you know, eating all these foods like fish row, but this is an alternative. You could have mussels, crab, lobster, all of these things several times per week. Uh, the real crutch is going to be sourcing high quality wild caught stuff and figuring out how the nutrient density is going to tie in to your overall diet if you're not consuming it too frequently. Um, I'm sure some people are going to ask about canned versions of these foods, canned oysters, canned mussels, canned crab meat that's pasteurized. Obviously, the fresh version is far better. It's going to have a higher vitamin C content. The nutrients are going to be more preserved. But I wouldn't say, I would say there's lesser evils. You know, you could buy fresh pasteurized crab meat, but that's going to be way more expensive than the one that has additives in it. You can buy canned oysters or you can buy fresh packed oysters at an Asian market. You know, you could buy clams that are already shucked. You could buy raw clam meat in certain places. That's going to be far superior to the canned versions, the smoked versions, especially things that are packaged in oil. So for those of you guys who are asking that, if canned food is the only thing you have access to, that's fine. If you guys want to talk about thinned fish and things like anchovies and sardines, of course, those are great too. The main reason I'm focusing on shellfish in this video is because of that accessibility reason. You know, the access that we would have had to shellfish is much easier than thinned fish. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any additional questions, please let me know. If you guys want to check out my Amazon shop, there is some canned cod liver oil on there that I view as a nutrient dense food to achieve uh, some nutrient density in your diet. If you guys are on Twitter or Instagram, please drop me a follow. And last but not least, if you guys would like to reach out to me in regards to optimizing the nutrient density of your diet, uh, you can shoot me an email, frankatefano at gmail.com or contact me through the form on my website.